by making as soon as pleated skirt. I basically cut two rectangular pieces. I knew the width of my fabric wasn't wide enough, so I had to sew a seam down the middle to make one extra long rectangle. The length of the skirt can be whatever you like it to be. Mine was about 15 inches long, and that's including seam allowance. So what I did was start to mark points from that center seam, which were about two inches apart along the width of the entire piece, ensuring that I could create pleats that were two inches wide. This is how I made the pleats. I would take the next two inch marking point and fold it towards the previous pleat, ensuring that the folded areas sit as close as possible and then pin it in place. Then I would take the next two inch marking and I'd fold it under toward the next two inch marking and pin it in place. I continued making these two inch wide pleats until the width of the piece wrapped snugly around my waist. Then I just ensured I had one inch seam allowance on either side so that I could attach the zipper afterwards. I'm now sewing down the top edge of the pleats just to keep them in place. I'm using my overlocker. Take your time when sewing here because you want the folds of your pleats to sit as close as possible together. Before ironing down my pleats, I'm going to hem the bottom of my skirt. It would be really hard to hem afterwards, so now is the perfect time to do so. First, I have overlocked the edges, and then I folded it over one inch, and then I'm using my twin needle to sew on the right side of the fabric to give a professional finish. Now that it's all hemmed, I need to mark one inch up to add the white ribbon detail as seen on Asuna's skirt. Here I am attaching the white ribbon using iron-on adhesive. You can go ahead and secure this even further by sewing it down. After carefully pressing down all the pleats, I'm now going to top stitch all the folded parts about three and a half inches down. I then attached the zipper at the back and sewed the rest of the back seam closed and I'm now attaching the waistband. The piece of fabric I cut was about three inches wide, folded in half and including a half an inch seam allowance. I've also ensured that my waistband strip is extended so that I can add a hook attachment to it later on. Here you can see I've added the hook attachment and my Asuna skirt is all done. I used a long sleeve top that fits me well to trace out my sleeves. I simply extended it down to create this shape here. I then pinned red ribbon along the bottom of the sleeve and I sewed it down on either edge to secure it in place. Do take your time here. I used a piece of chiffon, folded it in half lengthwise and gathered it at the top. And then I attached it to the inside of the bottom of the sleeves for an added pretty detail. I then used reference photos of Asuna to cut the shape of the top part of the sleeves and then I added some fray glue to prevent the edges from fraying. For Asuna's cape, I pretty much made a really long circle skirt. Then I cut a seam straight through the one side. Here I am attaching the waistband, folding it over and then sewing it down. I ensured that my waistband is long enough to wrap around my waist. I didn't film this, but you should, of course, hem your edges before attaching the waistband. I then added another hook attachment to the waistband to secure it at the back. I traced a pair of leggings I own to create as soon as leggings. You want to ensure that it fits you snugly. I then used reference photos of Asuna to cut the top shape of the leggings. I then pinned the red bias tape and top stitched all the edges to secure it in place. I'm now using reference photos to sketch the cross decal that goes on the side of each leg. I've added interfacing to the cross decal to give it a little more strength and I added little snips in between, folded it over, pressed it with some iron-on adhesive to secure the folded edges in place. I then top stitched it into place, taking my sweet time around those corners. 
Please don't laugh at my figure form. She doesn't have arms, so I had to improvise. I draped as soon as arm hangs according to reference photos. You will see the shape later on in this video. After draping it, I finally figured out the shape and then I cut out a new pattern and tested it on my figure form once again. After draping, this is the shape you will end up with. This part over here is on fold. And these here wrap around your arm. I then cut two of these using my pattern piece and I added interfacing to the one to give it some body. I then placed the two pieces right sides touching. Here you can see the interfacing on the one side. I am now going to sew along the outer edges and leave a gap so that I'm able to turn it right sides out later on. After flipping it inside out, I gave it a good press and pinned the gold ribbon all along the edges. I will now top stitch it down on either side to secure it in place. To finish it off, I will simply add velcro to be able to open and close the arm hangs easily and of course add the gold cross decals later on. The bodice was the most challenging part of Asuna's outfit for me, but certainly my favourite because it ended up fitting me so well. I began by draping half of the front and back bodice area. I will be doubling it up later to create the full bodice of course. I constantly looked at reference photos of Asuna and simply eyeballed it as I went along. So these are my pattern pieces. Originally I wanted a seam down the side here but I decided to make it one big pattern piece instead. I decided to cut the one side first and then simply move it over to ensure that the other side is flat. I've pinned all the pattern pieces to my fabric and I'm now going to cut it out, remembering to include a half inch seam allowance. You can see that I've extended my pattern a bit on the left here. Here I'm doing a quick check to make sure everything fits nicely. I decided to cut out some lining pieces just for the front and not the back. I've pinned the front pieces of both my fabric and my lining pieces and I'm now going to sew it. I then top stitched the front of the bodice piece to keep it in place in preparation for the bias binding. I then attached the lining right side touching, folded it over inside out and I am now going to top stitch it all down. I then inserted the zipper by pinning it in place and trying it on my figure form. Here you can also see my new hemline. It is longer on the left and shorter on the right. Here I'm just trying it on for size. I measured half of the circumference around my neckline and I cut a rectangular piece at this length and I made it about 4 inches in width so that I could fold it in half. I cut two pieces of these. When I sew each half of my mandarin collar, I ensure that I sew along the little curved corner area there. And I also sew along the back edge. I sewed it down and trimmed any excess bulk. Then I created little slits along the curved area to avoid puckering after turning it right side out. Now I'm going to top stitch it. I'm now going to attach the collar to the bodice neckline. As you can see, I've quickly tack stitched the zipper in place with contrasting thread after finishing the mandarin collar. I am now going to sew it down using a zipper foot. Then I remove the contrasting thread with a seam ripper. And I'm all done! I'm now figuring out the placement of the red bias binding. Then I pin it in place and top stitch it down either edge to secure it. The final step is to cut out and attach all the decals and then you're pretty much done. I've draped the armor to create a pattern that I'll be using to trace on the craft foam as well as the front white faux leather piece. Here I simply hot glued the dots into place. I've hot glued the white folio the piece onto the craft foam to give it that armor-like feel. Here I'm making the top part of the breastplate. plate. 
I'm now cutting out and adding all the pretty details to the breastplate using silver glitter craft foam. I'm using reference photos to guide me with all the shapes and the decals. I finished it off with a velcro attachment in the back. Using reference photos once again, I'm now cutting out the shape of the armor attachments for Asuna's white boots. I'm using the same technique as for the breastplate by covering it with a white faux leather fabric. Here I'm cutting out all the edges and decals using silver glitter craft foam and hot gluing it in place. I finished it off with a velcro attachment once again. We used a toy sword as a base and sawed off the handles. Then we used a combination of popsicle sticks, hot glue and craft foam to develop the rest of the sword. We're now priming the craft foam pieces we have cut out using reference photos. We're using wood glue and we let it dry overnight before covering it with spray paint. Now we're simply hot gluing all our various pieces in place. 